good day to you guys. So I mentioned the last video, which was about the internet, that like, I kind of gave up. The internet just really isn't it nowadays. So um, I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna talk about like, what it's like being outside. Cause I know, at least for me, not everyone remembers what those days were like. It's just in the outdoors. So recently, in the past year or so, I've been trying to go more places with my family and my friends to get fresh air and reintegrate in society, which I've been shut out of for so long. Some kind of psychiatric rehabilitation, this is. But <coughs> the outside world is scary as hell. It's terrifying. Um, it's not just me, not everyone goes outside anymore. So, especially after COVID, inside is the new norm. Everyone's used to those work from home laws. And that just means that the streets seem like empty. And I, like I moved into a new neighborhood in the past year or two during COVID days. And I barely know my neighbors. I've heard like in the old days before the internet, it used to be like everyone in the neighborhood was a big family. You could like go and talk to everyone and like borrow food or like borrowing sugar is an outdated joke nowadays. No one does that. So no one talks with each other anymore, which means the streets are quiet and empty. And now there's this strange feeling of tenseness every time I go outside. Now, I can understand if it was only me feeling tense because I don't go outside that often and I don't really, it's an unfamiliar territory for me. And things that are unfamiliar are scary. But really, it seems like everyone is in fear of the outside. Now, I live in America and America is a nation full of fear especially in the 21st century, after 9-11, I'd say. But even before then, like we have crime and drugs and gun violence and mass shootings everywhere in the streets, everywhere outside. So everywhere we turn is a reminder of that kind of stuff. Like every time you turn on the news or go online or like you're, you, you hear this news about violence, new mass shootings, things like that. And then you go outside and you think, yeah, on ordinary days like this, in places such as this, places that seemed quiet at first, this is when it all starts. And for seemingly no reason either, there's no like hint that it's going to come. It's just arrives for just out of the blue. And you can really, you're really torn between the inside and the outside, where inside you hear the news, but outside you can kind of feel it in the air that something's gonna happen and you feel scared it's gonna happen to you. So you're constantly watching your back just to make, just trying to stay aware of your surroundings, make sure that nothing really comes at you. Now, it might just be me and my family, but I, I'm really afraid of homeless people. Like in the city I live, which is a pretty big city, and there's homeless people everywhere. There's like these drug addicts, or maybe they're mentally ill, or both. And like they just roam the streets and there's no real effort done to like keep them away from anyone. Now, not every homeless person is bad. Some people are like making genuine efforts to find homes again, find work and get clean and get rid of their addictions. But I feel like it's 90% that just love doing drugs and not contributing at all to society. Because let me be honest, as someone who's fought an addiction before and knows what it's like, like, honestly, I'd rather just stay addicted. If given the choice, I would also just do drugs all day and 
not do any work and just like go through my day not caring about anything but once again as someone who's knows what it's like to fight an addiction i think the best thing we can do is make rehabilitation for these people mandatory but instead the city and the local government just decides to ignore the problem but i feel like it's not going to go away on its own homelessness especially now has been on the rise and it's it won't be taken care of if you keep enacting bad policies or no policies at all to get rid of this and every time i go outside so it's not even a rare occurrence just every time i like go on an outing maybe to a park or downtown or to a store i see homeless people just yelling at no one and fist fighting the air or even fighting each other and sometimes i get dangerously close to where i'm walking and it's scary because like I've heard of people getting injured or even, like, killed by homeless people. And once again, it happens for no reason. And I don't want to be, like, another tragedy. I could get seriously injured if a homeless person, like, walked up to me for no reason. And just, like, either punched me or stabbed me. And... The thing I hate the most about homeless people is that they remind me too much of myself, if that makes any sense. They're like foils of insanity. They're... And they remind me, like, in of the my own insanity, kind of in my heart, and my own feeling is a fighting addiction and thinking, like, what should be my path in life? Should I stay insane? Should I stay addicted? Should I try to get clean? Should I try to be a contributing member of society? Or should I just stay here? And these homeless people are kind of the end, the end all of insanity. Just the final step down the hole. And I'm scared of being like them. So every time I cross the street, I'm like, I don't want to see myself in them. Because I hate seeing myself in them. And once again on the streets, there's not a single police officer in sight. So it's like no one really cares about the safety of the citizens living in these big cities. There's children who have to pass by homeless encampments on their way to school. And they have to witness like what's going on behind the scenes. Just the the lowest of the low in society, like a zombie apocalypse, and they have to, like, it's washed into their mind what drugs can do, or what mental illness can do, what homelessness, what unemployment, what poverty does to people. And they have to put their safety at risk, because they might step on used needles or broken glass or get attacked. And... For some reason in America, we don't prosecute people for open drug use. I think that might be one of the main problems why stuff like this happens. Because um, I'd say, once again, there's no police officers. But if an officer like monitored the, the streets to make sure no one was like doing drugs in public and potentially putting themselves and others at risk, I feel like um, prosecution for that would be much higher and the streets would be safer as a result. But I'm a, I'm a pretty liberal person when it comes to drugs. I think recreational marijuana should be legal, but I think drugs should only be used in the safety of your own home where you won't like bother others or put them at risk. But in the city, you can just walk down the street and see people shoot up, do heroin, take pills, whatever out in the open and like no one does anything about it but then i'm not really sure what the government can do to solve this problem like once again police officers could arrest people if they are kind of being a hindrance but do we put them in prison or should we maybe should we bring back mental institutions like um i'm not gonna say psych wards because that's kind of uh 
I forgot what the word was again. It's vernacular. <laughs> so, um... But what I mean is probably a, a place that, like, we could separate people that are mentally ill or addicted to drugs from normal citizens, healthy citizens. But, like, I know it sounds super evil, and we all know, like, the kinds of things that used to happen in those institutions. Like, I've read One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, but... I think it'd be beneficial not only to us, but to the homeless population because um, we should be, they should be kept separate so that they can rehabilitate and control environments. And if those government buildings were like well-funded and we just gave them a safe space to seek health without being, in, to seek help, without being encouraged to relapse, I believe would be very beneficial. Because, like, if left to their own devices, and I know because this is the same thing that happened to me, if left to their own devices, they wouldn't really want to seek help. They would just enjoy relapsing over and over. And I think only, like, someone who's stern and disciplining an authority figure would be able to help these people improve. But instead, it seems like everyone doesn't care. The government, the police, some, some of my, um, my peers, I would say, don't really care about this problem. Neither right nor left really talks about it. And we all know that homelessness is a big issue. We don't really understand the the bad things that happen because of homelessness and because of like, ongoing epidemics such as opiates. And now we just let these homeless people, people that are addicted to drugs, walk the streets freely. And it really shows the horror of the 21st century because these people have nothing to lose. They don't have names, they don't have jobs, they don't have families. They don't even remember their own name. They could go missing one day and never be found, and it seems like no one would really care about it. So when you have nothing to lose like that, you just like do whatever, I guess, with, and you don't fear any repercussions because what are they gonna take away from you? So that's why like crime in these areas is so crime and assault, stabbings, murders, harassment, rape. Things like that are common in these areas because no one seems to look out for any of these perpetrators or potential perpetrators that could be threats, not only to adults, not only to women, but to children and each other. Instead of just ruminating on bad things, like, this video isn't just about homeless people and the epidemics. I want to talk about good things that happen outside, too. Like, when I'm at the park, when I'm outside for an outing or perhaps a party or a baseball game, I like to watch parents play with their kids. I find it very heartwarming. And I've reached that age where I no longer empathize with the kid or I don't know if as a child I used to empathize with the kid or not but I started empathizing with my parents too because like in less than 10 years I think I'll be a parent of my own a, a parent of my own child and so I put myself in the shoes of the parents rather than the children because I know it's going to be me someday bringing my kid to the park of course, I might still have a job by then, but hopefully where I'm going, I'd like to have a passive income by now, if that's possible, by the time I'm a parent. And, like, it may sound odd, but I've always wanted to be a father. I find it to be very motivating to think about my future kids. And one of my favorite game series of all time is Princess Maker, which is like, um, 
kind of parenthood simulator thing where you have your um, daughter and you have to raise her from 10 to 18. And um, I love the wholesome connections I could form, stuff I could do that makes me like feel very nice, feel like a good parent. Because, like, not all parents nowadays are very good. But I would like to be a good parent. Of course, everyone would want to. And I'd like to prepare if possible. And I want to make sure that my child's life is as good as possible. So, parenthood is just like nothing else in this world. It's the raison d'etre of all living things. And I'm willing to accept that purpose in life to be a parent, to make sure that my that my future generations can thrive in a happy environment and stay healthy, which is why I like going outside. And I like seeing these people like form valuable in re relationships and have good and kind interactions with each other. Because I think family Familial love, but also love between married partners, is one of the ultimate bonds between humanity. No more of that spiritual emptiness with chatting online, developing parasocial relationships with streamers or celebrities, or imagining yourselves in the shoes of fictional characters. Outside, I'm exposed to the real real relationships, real interactions, and it's magnificent. And it's so satisfying because I know that there is no, there's only benefits in this kind of living. There's no downside, there's no end. So I'm not always scared every time I go outside. Outside is wonderful. I love living in the real world and hopefully I'll never become a shut-in because then I'd be missing out on those kinds of interactions. And because I know that real love and genuine interactions between people waits for me behind the doors of my room. Also, while walking down the street once, I saw a girl in lolly cosplay smoking a cigarette, and I thought it was really, really hot. So I like seeing those things too. Anyways, uh... <sighs> Thanks for watching. Um, I'm not sure what my next video is going to be. I hope you got some kind of entertainment or like benefit, some kind of education or info. I hope you learned something or I hope you felt something. Um, I guess I'll see you next time once I feel like recording again, once I write another script. Uh, peace.